so today i am going to discuss lecture 61 and this is a two part lecture on real coded genetic algorithms and again this is part of the optimization series and i am dr ranjan ganguly now we have spent a lot of time discussing binary genetic algorithm and we have seen that many problems can be solved by using binary ga and we have also seen the beauty of binary ga in terms of using bits and strings to perform various crossing mutation mating pool selection and so on such that these are close to what is actually done in biological species. So the question comes to our mind is what is the need for this real coded GA? And essentially real coded GA is required because many problems in optimization, the design variables are typically continuous design variables and you would like to know the optimal values to full computer precision for example, eight decimal places or 16 decimal places as the case may be. Now binary GA requires many bits of code to code each variable. So essentially every variable is put into a string. So you have these ones and zeros which represent each particular variable. Now in real coded GA, we code each variable as a floating point or real number. So in some way you can think of the fact that you are simply keeping the design variable as it is in the form of a real number. Or as far as computers are concerned as a floating point number. So this is also known as continuous GA. And of course, we are using the term real coded GA here. Sometime I will call this as just real GA, where it's meant that it is real coded GA. Now, one of the advantages of real coded GA is that it may need less storage than binary GA because you are using a single floating point number to represent each variable instead of the various bits we were using for the binary GA. So we saw that in binary GA, one of the problems was that if you wanted to get a high level of precision in terms of the real variables, you, use, you need to know or you need to use a large number of bits to code the variables. And these number of bits could be 8, could be 16, could be more than that. And as you increase the number of bits, the computer storage requirements would become large. And one more fact is that a very long string is needed to represent design variables to a high level of precision. We also saw that the process of encoding and decoding variables in binary GA is quite cumbersome and complicated. So essentially you need to continuously move between the strings which are written out as bits to the real number variables and this requires some coding and some functions to be coded in to perform this particular task. In real coded GA we bypass this problem and the design variables are represented as floating point numbers. So let us say if we have a problem with n design variables which is a typical problem in optimization then the design vector is represented in exactly the same form as in gradient based, me based method. So you have the vector x, which is comprised of x1, x2, x3, all the way to xn. So these are the n design variables for the problem. And each of these is essentially a floating point number or a real number. So just to give an example, in binary GA, we would represent a design vector of this form, x1, x2 to xn, as a giant string of this form. So 
you can see that this representation in terms of a giant string though it is very good for a computer may not be very good for a person looking at the string or trying to code things with the string so again we could probably bypass this process especially when we are dealing with real number design variable so that's the primary task that the real coded ga tries to solve so again to summarize in real ga n floating point numbers are used to represent the design vector and in binary ga large strings of bits are used to represent the design vector that's the basic difference between the real coded ga and the binary coded ga now depending on the computer you are using you can use single precision or double precision math to represent the design variables now real coded ga is also a search method and therefore you start with the population of values now to create this population you need to form some move limits for each of the design variables and essentially these move limits bound the design space so if i have 1 to n number of design variables for each of these design variables i have a lower limit and i have a higher limit so for example i could have a lower limit like 0 and a higher limit like 10 which we will use in some of the simple example problems we will create in this lecture now this is also something we did for binary ga this is something which is required in any kind of population based method because essentially here the population is going to be created in a certain box which is formed by this particular move limit set in contrast in gradient based method you essentially start out from a point so you only need a point to start off your method though you do need to put move limits in gradient based methods also to make sure that your design variables do not take certain values which may not be realistic so the fitness function is exactly the same as before it's a function of n variables x1 x2 x3 to xn and again we always try to maximize the fitness function in the case of ga now real ga would mitigate the complexity which is caused because of the encoding and decoding process needed in binary ga which we have spent a lot of time discussing before but i actually think that process of encoding and decoding and the different crossing and mutation which are performed in binary ga do let you get a good feel of how genetic algorithms came about historically and then we can use some of those concepts into the real ga process now the next thing to do is to start the starting population and the starting population is essentially created by taking a floating point number within the design space for each variable so here you look at the higher and the lower bound for each design variable and you find a floating point number within this particular space and then you develop many such floating point numbers to create the entire starting population so for example let us say the example has lower bound of 0 and higher bound of 10 and we want to create a starting population we can do it using random number generation we can get random numbers between 0 and 10 we can use a uniform distribution so that it's very well spread out throughout the design space so for example here i have obtained a population so you have capital n number of members of the population so this is corresponding to each of the design vector values at different points in the space and of course as you would expect each design vector has size x1 x2 all the way to x small n so this is member one of the population member two of the population and member capital n of the population so this matrix has size small n into capital n 
So the starting population or the initial population can be developed by using just a matrix of real numbers, which is very easy to create by using any kind of random number generator. Now, as we have mentioned before, this random sampling can be augmented by uniform sampling. And this will ensure that all parts of the design space are well sampled. You could also use a complement type of thinking, and this could be done by subtracting the population of each design variable from its higher bound. For example, if I have a simple problem with two design or a design variable like this, two dimensional design variable 2.5 and 9, and I'm in the domain 0 to 10, I could subtract both these from 10 and I could get one more point 0.7.51. So this would be a complement of this particular design point in this domain 0 to 10. So again, this kind of complement would let you sample the design space in a good manner. So once again, it is good to start with the population, which is larger than the population which you use later in the generations in the reproduction and the other processes. So you could start with the population of 1.2n to 2n. And in this, you take the n best points for further processing using reproduction cross crossing function and the mutation. So this is, like I have discussed before, somewhat like a pre preliminary screening test, which you use to filter out some of the weaker points. Now, as far as some of these functions are concerned, which you use on this population, they are slightly different between real GA and binary GA, though what we use for reproduction can be quite similar. Now for reproduction, we can use roulette wheel selection in the real GA. Now, if you go back and look at the video for binary GA, all you have to do is replace string J with design variable J. And if you are able to make this mental shift, then you can essentially use that method right here for the real GA problem. So the fitness function and the cumulative probability would be calculated in exactly the same manner except now you do not need to work with those binary numbers. You can work directly with the design variables. So just like in binary GA, we selected the mating pool uh, members as one, three, two, one, and three. You can similarly select the mating pool members. Recall that that entire process was based on function values. And therefore the function value process will be pretty similar as far as the real coded and the binary GA is concerned. Again, once you have obtained the mating members, you create some pairs like one, three, two, one we had created, and you keep one pair, one set probably separate one point, which is a very good point. You do not want to change it. And then you use these particular points for the mating pool. So the only difference in reproduction process for a real GA is that the string I is replaced by the design variable I, which is actually the design vector. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, very similarly, you can use the scaling correction we discussed for roulette wheel selection as well the, as the tournament selection method, and you can apply it to the real GA problem. So the reproduction process does not create any new points. At this point, you have simply created the mating pool and therefore you are going to now move further and you are going to look at the crossing of the genetic material and the mutation. So that's where the new points are going to be created. So what I mean here is that the mating pool creation does not create any new points. So the selection process does not create any new points. So in my next video, which is the main part of this particular discussion on real coded GA, we are going to discuss the methods which we use for crossing and which we use for mutation. They are slightly different compared to binary GA. And we will see that 
those methods will be quite simple to actually code in for most engineering and scientific type people who are very well versed in real numbers and in fact in many cases nowadays people use real coded GA because most of the problems tend to be those based on real numbers so I will stop this lecture here this culminates lecture 61 and I will see you in my next video